My name is Junaid. Um, a third year medical student. Uh, my name is Junaid, and I'm a fourth year medical student. My name is Junaid. Alhamdulillah, now a doctor. Uh, I also do YouTube. Um, what else can I say? I still got that jumper, by the way. <laughs> So, Junaid, how has third year of medicine been different to second year? I still got that jumper, by the way. So, <laughs> I've had that exposure to the wards and the patients, and <clears throat> we've had that time to sort of get to know what the job's like itself, not just the theory behind it. So, I think just getting a bit more of a real life experience of what medicine actually is and what the job of a doctor is. I feel like, I've had my moments where I really didn't want to do medicine, and then I've also had my moments where I absolutely loved it. But I'll be straight with you. Um, like this year has been a bit of a tough one because our placements were very sort of, uh, what's the word, very sort of fixed and we couldn't really explore like what medicine truly has to offer if that makes sense. Yeah, I think fifth year was a bit more like third year. So in third year we were just sort of getting to know what medicine was, whereas in fifth year we consolidated what we already knew. There wasn't too much new learning to do. And I feel like it was the year where everything sort of came together. All our knowledge came together, all our previous experience, all our clinical experience came together and we finally went out onto the wards. And basically, we're essentially like doctors. We did the job of a doctor without the pay. That's, that's the thing I tell everyone. But um, Alhamdulillah, I think it's the year that I truly felt confident in my ability to see someone on their own and to formulate a plan or to take them through that sort of healthcare journey on my own. So Alhamdulillah, big, big year for confidence, big year for just feeling ready for the job. I'm not sure, I think my iPad actually. Um, my iPad, I had it with me pretty much all the time, now that I think about it. Whenever I went on the wards, I'd always jot a quick note down on my iPad. And yeah, I could use a notepad and pen, but I thought I'd make it, uh, everything's backed up on the cloud and everything's super fluid and easy to use. Um, so I just use the iPad and... Um, Definitely the iPad, still the iPad. Um, every single time I go to placement, it's literally the best device to bring because you can go on the internet, so you can search up like medical terms, um, it's not like a phone, so doctors don't get angry at you when you're, because when you're on your phone, it kind of looks a bit um, disrespectful and it just doesn't look right. But on your iPad, it looks like you're actually doing work. Um, I am actually doing work, by the way, I don't be messing about. Um, you know what, it's kind of mad. I don't think I bought my iPad into placement even once this year. Yeah, so I would say the most important thing to bring in is an open mind. In the past, I used to go in thinking that the most important thing was the knowledge, getting things right, understanding the condition. But I think now the most important thing is the interaction you have with the person. It's not about getting the diagnosis, it's not about getting the right treatments. It's about understanding the human in front of you, being their hope. And I feel as though you can't search up, you can't search that. You have to have that innate ability. You have to develop that innate ability. So I would say having an open mind with every patient you see. Some patients might have you might instantly click with them and others you might have to build that up. By the end of the day, going in with an open mind, not judging someone, not going in with a preconceived notion, treating the person, not the disease. That's, that's the mentality I went in with. And I think that's why I feel more competent this year because it's all about people, it's not about disease. So an open mind, that's what I would suggest. Uh, I'd say like helping in a cesarean section assisting the cesarean section like it's such an incredible experience and so humbling and just to know that you played a role in bringing that person to life um like subhanallah even as a muslim as well like it's i found it so like uh humbling as a muslim surprisingly enough the most interesting thing i've seen all year was this morning actually um so i got to scrub in on a removal of a breast cancer <laughs> and there's a funny story behind that one and i feel like <laughs> I was really, I felt really valuable in that, um, in the theatre because I was the only assistant and also the, th the surgeon was really relying on me to sort of hold the surgical field open with clamps. Um, there was a couple of moments where there were a few bleeders as well, so those are a little bit exciting. Uh, but yeah, I still stick by with what I said last year, that I definitely don't want to do surgery, 
but I think it's an incredibly exciting field for anyone that is interested. I did see some really cool stuff on elective. So I did, I did my elective in Vietnam in Hanoi. You were there as well, <laughs> mad guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so for those that don't know, me, Taha, and Naj did our elective in the same place. On my first day, I could, I think I can confidently say that me and the students, um, it was a student from Cambridge. We, if we were not there, the patient would have died. And, and I can say that 99% sure certain. I'm 99% certain that that patient would have died. So imagine, right, the patient's lying there. No one is tending to them. We're in the middle of a busy emergency department in Hanoi. There's, you know, noises all around. Nurses running, like, seeing each patient. Doctors are doing their own thing. There's this one old little lady. Bear in mind, no one speaks a word of English. We can't communicate with this patient. But she's lying down and her SAT monitor is just beeping like mad, the sats are dropping, no one's going to it. And then me and the student were like, how come no one's responding to it? How come no one's going there? It's our first day, we didn't really know what we're allowed to do, what we're not allowed to do, but we went anyway, instinctively. And the patient just getting worse and worse and worse. We're calling for help, the doctors, they're not even responding to us. So the student goes, the student next to me goes and grabs the doctor, she's like, you need to see this woman. And we opened, so I actually opened her mouth to have a look at her airway and there's blood clots falling out of her mouth. She's got massive upper GI bleed. Um, and that's when all the doctors come and I think they ended up doing CPR on her. Um, I think she was sent to ITU, but I know for a fact of me and that student didn't recognize that woman's condition in that moment, she very likely would have died. So. Allah puts you in places for a certain reason and I think that was the reason I was meant to be there, so Alhamdulillah. I think I've learned a lot about myself. Um, one thing that I have learned is I think I'm good at sort of co compartmentalising things and breaking things down because when the going gets tough and like when you have a lot of things to do at the same time, because obviously I do YouTube as well, like, like you, um, <laughs> I've just learned how, how to manage my time better and how to like break down big tasks into smaller chunks um, so that I don't become overwhelmed by what's in front of me. Um, You're a lot more capable than you think you are. One thing I learned was the power of habits and I really started to nail, nail down certain habits that I feel would elevate my growth as a person in general. So stuff like journaling and meditating, and cold showers and exercising more um, and just being more mindful as well. I feel like, I feel like these are things that not only help me in medicine, um, and make me a better student, but just make me a better person overall as well. And it's funny, you know, because the habits and stuff, I still obviously, alhamdulillah, agree with what I said. Um, I'm still continuing that stuff. But I think this year, the biggest change I've noticed is I'm just a bit more relaxed. I don't feel as jittery. I don't feel like I need to prove myself. I feel comfortable in my own skin. I think that's the best way to describe it. Because I think when you know yourself to a certain extent, when you know you're capable, when you have the confidence within, you don't need to show that to everyone. You just have it within you. I feel like I'm actually a bit more reserved this year. I, I don't think I'm as outgoing as I used to be, um, for good or for bad, but I think I've developed a, a more secure sense of comfort, but also confidence in my ability where I don't need to show that to anyone. So I feel a bit more grounded. I feel a lot more comfortable. I feel a lot more, I feel a lot more alive. I feel very chill, very comfortable, yeah, very relaxed, very zen, alhamdulillah. And also a deen, man. I feel like deen, that's one thing I'm, I feel as though it keeps you grounded and it's one thing I'm trying to constantly improve every single day. I think it's just made me a better person. You know, I've gotten a lot closer to my deen, alhamdulillah. May Allah preserve that. And uh, yeah, I just feel feel a lot more like a superhuman because of it. So, alhamdulillah. Uh, struggle. Um, okay, everyone says this, but it's it's quite true. I think the transition from preclinical <laughs> to clinical is a really really big one. And um, I think in preclinical you have lectures and everything's sort of organised for you. Um, like you know what you need to learn and you know when you're going to learn it and all that stuff. But with clinical years, this year has been really tough in the sense of we were just given like a list of conditions and we were expected to do our own learning and find our own resources and 
actively seek out those patients on the wards and I think it was a lot more self-directed, it was a lot more independent. But I think the biggest thing I learned is just ask the years above, ask the people in the years above and for tips and advice because That's I do that. And I'm With the years above now. As well. And they came in clutch, like they really helped provide perspective, they told us how to study um, and, and what to focus on. And I Definitely the workload bro, like, you know, we thought third year was a lot and then fourth year, it just gets even more. And I think even at the start of the year, <laughs> I think, uh, that the opening lecture in the year, the staff said to us that this would be the hardest year because the amount of content you have to go through is just ridiculous. I never really thought it'd be as bad as it was, but here we <laughs> got through it. You're dying, bro. Um, um, so but I cut like last year was a struggle, you're more bro. Than you actually think this is true. If you set your mind to it. Oh, bro. Yeah, well, alham bro. Alhamdulillah, you know. I'm not going to lie. Like, this. I don't want this to come across the wrong way. But Alhamdulillah, this year was relatively easy. It, it was not nowhere near as challenging as fourth year, even third year. I think it was probably the most simple year of med school we've ever had. So in terms of academics, I didn't really struggle, alhamdulillah. You know, exams were fine, SJC was fine, PSA was fine. Allocation for next year, alhamdulillah, was good as well, I'm satisfied. But there was still some struggle in my personal life. So for those that don't know, actually I'm starting to off in the wrong way, innit? I'm starting off by seeing the struggle, but it's actually a very good thing, alhamdulillah. So I recently got married. Alhamdulillah, that's the bombshell. Yeah, I recently got married, alhamdulillah. So, and, and I'm, I feel incredibly blessed, incredibly, incredibly just at peace and happy about that. But I think there's also a struggle in learning how to be good to your partner and learning how to coexist with someone because you spent, you know, I've spent 22 years of my life single. And, and sort of just focusing on myself. And uh, now, alhamdulillah, I have, a, uh, I have a wife who I feel responsible for. So it's, it's that part of learning how to be a good partner, learning how to be more understanding. And I think it's that marriage or any sort of long-term relationship brings out parts of yourself that you didn't know you had. And it forces you to reflect and look at your, you look at your life as if it's a mirror. Because anyone can claim to be patient, anyone can claim to be understanding, but are you really patient and understanding when tested? And I think that's what marriage exposes, but it also helps you to improve on the things that you didn't even know needed improving. I feel very blessed, alhamdulillah, very grateful, um, and may Allah preserve that, inshallah. Amen. And last few questions as well. So if you have to go back in time and meet first year Junaid, what would you say to first year Junaid? <sighs> first year Junaid, remember why you started, because it's a marathon, not a sprint. Five years is, you know, it's a, it's a long time, but it's also a very short time. It goes very quickly. And it's not just five years of medical school, it's five years of your life, like Away said. I was in the room whilst he was saying it, but it's five years of your life. So life doesn't stop. Life never stops for anything. So embrace life, embrace the ups, embrace the downs, and just keep moving forward one step at a time. And when the going gets tough, when things seem hopeless, when you feel really down in the dumps and demotivated and you feel like there's no hope, just remember that you are where you are because of your hard work, because of your ability, because of the people that make dua for you and prayer for you, the people that support you. So remember why you started, remember, just remember that why, remind yourself of that why, and that will fuel you going forward, inshallah. And above all, have trust in Allah. That's what I would say. And the last question is, uh, do you think medical school is worth it? Oh bro, 100%, man, 100%. Um, there, were, there were times during med school that I would say, no, it's not worth it. But in retrospectiveness, or in, in retrospection, 100%, because it not only, it's not only an amazing course, it's not only one of the biggest gifts that we could have, it's also, it's just a beautiful profession. It enables you to carry out a beautiful profession of helping people, touching people's lives in such an impactful way. And another thing I think we often take for granted is that we have unprecedented knowledge of the human body that the general population just doesn't have. And so if we're not using that to better our lives, 
and the lives of our families and loved ones, then what is it for? You know, that education, education and knowledge is priceless. And I think medicine is like a step above that even more. So if anyone's considering doing medicine, yeah, the NHS isn't great. Yeah, the system isn't perfect, but the profession itself remains and will always remain beautiful. And so that's what I'm going to end on. Alhamdulillah, I would 100% recommend medicine. I'd 100% recommend going into it and giving it your all because I can look back and say it's the best decision I ever made. Alhamdulillah. Well, you're married. <laughs> 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 that is all, man. That is all. Alhamdulillah. Bismillah, bro. Bismillah. Bro, this guy's always doing carotid massages on me. Yeah? If you know, if you don't know, then get to know. Get to know. But essentially, it causes you to faint. This guy's always just bloody like massaging know. my carotid. Basically. But one thing I do want to say as well is, if you know about this hoodie, then you know, you know who I'm talking about. You know I'm talking to you. Ah. <laughs> I don't know what happens to this guy, but you know I'm talking to you, yeah? Okay. He's talking to me. Talk to yeah, me. Talk to me. Look. Ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> I killed my... Ah! No! <laughs>